What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number 61 of The Climb here with Luzanak today. We will be wrapping up season number 8. Yeah, wow, 8. <laughs> 8 seasons already. That's absolutely crazy to think, isn't it? It doesn't feel like that long ago since we were starting our adventure here at Luzanak. But two stadiums later, five promotions later, we find ourselves in a situation where today we are on the cusp of Champions League football. Just a little bit of a heads up before we get started with today's video. Uh, tomorrow there will not be an episode, but tomorrow live on Twitch from 11am British Summer Time... We're going to be live streaming the pre-season and the off-season. So I will put up a video on YouTube saying, hey, we're live, so you know when it's happening. But uh, yeah, if you crave some Luzanak action tomorrow, we will be live on Twitch. The link can be found down below in the description of this video. Anyway, shall we talk about stuff that's been going on here? Because since you were last year, we've played two games, and because of what's happened in those two games... There is still stuff to play for today. Yes, this is not a nothing game against Nancy to end the year. In fact, we have to win... To get Champions League football, it's going to be big. Um, so yes, of course, last episode, those two games against Athletic Club Bilbao, I don't want to think about them. They just upset me a little bit. So let's move on. And uh, well, 3-1, a recurring theme in these last two games of the year. Uh, the first of which was away from home against Nice, a 3-1 defeat, a game in which they just came out swinging and we didn't have a response. Yes, Chris got the opening goal for uh, Nice in the third minute and then a quick double before half time really put us on the back foot. And uh, we found ourselves 3-0 down at the break. I tried to give a team talk, I tried to rally the troops, but it was very much in vain. One consolation, all we could muster, it was Kenne with a kind of scrappy ball that just kind of fell to his feet from a set piece. Ultimately, this game here just undeniably disappointing. It was fairly even, although Nice had the better of the chances, and fundamentally, they took their chances. So, they deserve to win. Uh, the good news is, in our next game, which we absolutely had to win off the back of that loss, we beat Mets. Um, I did consider doing this for a live comm, but I thought because they were bottom of the league, it was going to be nice and straightforward. It wasn't, though. Ari got us off to a fly, a really good goal for him. But unfortunately, Gregory Guth scored for them in the 42nd minute, and it was 1-1 at half-time. You can perhaps imagine my reaction. We needed to win this game to maintain our vice grip, I suppose, on a fourth-place finish. And I was sat drawing 1-1 against the team who are bottom and worrying a little. The good news is for us, Antonio Brack converted a penalty and then Lopez scored in the 70th minute and 3-1 it finished. Wasn't the most convincing of results, but with those two results, this is how the league table looks today. And please bear in mind that today we take on Nancy, who, uh, well, themselves are now guaranteed to finish ahead of us and look very, very good, actually, to finish second in the league. So yeah, we're in fourth, but the big news here is we are even with Leon with marginally better goal difference. Basically, whatever Leon do, we just have to do the same. It is as simple as that. Um, if Marseille slip up, we could still, you know, win by a slimmer margin than Leon and still go up. Uh, even if Leon were to overturn the eight goal difference, which is very unlikely, I will confess. Ultimately, today we have to win. And we're taking on the team in second, and it's not going to be made any easier by injuries, because unfortunately for us, we have got a few. Um, just so you can see here, Marseille taking on Stade René in eighth. Meanwhile, for Lyon, they are away from home against Toulouse, and that is the Toulouse side who, of course, are our local rivals and are safe from the drop. Worth noting that Mets, who we beat 3-1 slightly unconvincingly, guaranteed to go down Montpellier, Angers, and Auxerre, also with a little bit to play for between them all to end the year. But anyway, in terms of our team news for today's game, the big news really is the fact that Barry Marsden is injured again, as is Sardella. They're not super serious long-term injuries, but they are injuries which mean that today, Ensoki has to come in to play left centre-back, and alongside him at right-back, Galvez is coming into the team. Of course, Galvez, uh, a pretty loyal servant to the club, has started 17 games this year, has played a lot of football, so no concerns, I suppose, with those two players coming in. And Soki himself, you can see, has started 21 games this year. So it's a squad of players that have played this year, albeit not quite our strongest 11. The rest of the team, though, we're going to go with the team that you know and love. Fundamentally, though, we've been on a pretty rough run of form to end the year, and this isn't going to be easy. We're taking on the team in second in the league, and we know that we kind of have to beat them, because if Leon win or draw... Well, we have to draw if Leon draw, and we have to win if Leon win. It, that's that's uh, as simple as it gets. So this is not done. This could be end-of-season drama. I hope it's not going to be. Nancy in some really good form, though. And, of course, fourth place will get a Champions League spot. And if we somehow miss out on Champions League football here, 
I don't know what I'll do. I'll be very upset. <laughs> Put it that way. I will be very, very upset, football manager, with myself, with you, the game, and with the players. So let's see what we can do here. Anyway, I will get the latest score showing up, but at the moment, ourselves and Leon not breaking the deadlock inside the first 20 minutes. Not a lot happening in terms of highlights. Let's show the latest scores. As I said, it's pretty simple. Whatever Leon do, we just have to do better. And, uh, well, right now in their game, they are nil-nil as Kofi brings the ball forward. A win here, a comfortable win, and we can just relax. Ari Lopez saved. Kofi's there. Goal number 14 for him. And uh, breathe a sigh of relief, everyone. Annoyingly, I've got to remember to scroll down every time, otherwise we're going to lose the result off the bottom. So, yeah, bear with me. But as much as, as much as I want to just check up on all the latest scores, the simple fact of the matter is, if we win, Leon have to win by eight goals more so at the moment Leon now need a 9-0 win I think you can see where this is going essentially let's beat the team in second today our former affiliates a team that we've done quite well against in previous meetings and so far well we've had the ideal start as Toulouse take the lead against Leon. go on Toulouse I feel conflicted Toulouse are our local rivals and I want them to win here to guarantee us our top four finish we could even get third if Marseille fail to win I believe so that's something worth keeping an eye on. And in fact, Toulouse are 2-0 up, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, at this point, a draw is enough, but I don't want a draw. I want to win. I want to end on a high. I want to give our fans something to sing and shout about to end the season. Elsewhere, how are Marseille getting on? They are 0-0 against Stade Rene. Um, yeah, you can see here, Leon 2-0 down. That is a big, big shock if that result say, stays like that. Still going to tell our players I'm not happy, but I'll, I'll say it under my breath. I'd be quite happy with 1-0 there. I would be quite... 1-0 would be fine. 1-0 would be fine. Also, that's just turned into a weird ASMR segment. Maybe that's a new market that I need to explore. The ASMR football manager market. I feel like untapped potential on YouTube for that. Anyway, 14 minutes left of this game. A second goal would just let me relax a little, I feel. Of course, following on from this game, we will have a little look through the squad. A bit of an end-of-season reflection. Talk about plans for next year. But of course... Um, as I've already mentioned, tomorrow, if you're watching this the day it goes up, you can watch us live play through some of preseason, if not a good chunk of it. I think we'll be live for most of the afternoon, which it would be lovely to have you stop by for us. We need to defend here. Kene, Bra, Adriano gets it clear up to Kofi. What can he do? He dinks it over to Sesco. Sesco, you finish these. Oh my word, it would have been some finish on the volley. When I said you finish these, I was thinking he was going to take it forward, but instead he decided to hit it on the half volley. And it very nearly paid off, although I was a little bit dubious of it at the time. So yeah, 1-0 here. 20 minutes left. You'd have to say we've been the better team, but we have had games like this throughout the season where we've been the better team and not been able to find a way through. Going to make a couple of changes. I'm going to take off Lopez and Sesco and bring in Huskarich and Gadic, the two Serbs coming onto the pitch. What will they be able to offer us? I'm hoping... A crucial second goal to help me relax. Although Leon are still two goals down in their game. We've had five half chances. No clear cut chances. But five half chances. And we just can't quite find a way through unfortunately. And Nancy bring the ball forward here. Massey bringing it forward. Hits it wide. We can breathe a sigh of relief everyone. I'm feeling quite calm now. I was worried that this was going to be one of those mad end of season kind of live comms. Marseille, Marseille unfortunately are beating Stade Rene now. So as things stand they will go up to second. Um, that current score. In fact, they're drawing. They are drawing. I feel like that league table's bugging out. I'm not sure what's happening. What I do know is happening is Galvez has scored. Take a bow, my son. First goal of the season. Not a bad first time to get it. Ten minutes left of the year. Ari gets the assist. It feels generous to give the free kick taker there the assist, if you ask me. But Galvez, alive and alert. 2-0 up. This is a good result against the team in second. Nancy are just a formidable opposition. And yeah, you can see here, Marseille have now taken the lead 1-0 in their game. I don't know why that didn't update right away. Maybe going to be defending a little bit here with five minutes left. If Stade Rene could get a goal, that would help us move one position up the table, which might sound insignificant, but I do think that is like half a million or a million pounds. Like, there is a little bit of prize money difference between kind of third and fourth. Anyway, Huskerich bringing it forward. Could we get a third? Could we get a... Of course we... Why have I questioned it? Goal number 12 for him. He's loving it. That was a great little finish. And Ari, supplier again. Although this time he really was the supplier. 
Huskerich with it as well. Really nice finish by the sub. On off the bench, playing Shadow Striker today. Brings it forward. Keeper comes out and he just, just squeezes it in at the near post. 3-0! Well, I wish we could have had a performance like this earlier on when we needed it in the cup uh, game against Athletic Club Bilbao. But ultimately, that is a fantastic little result. Ari picks up battle of the match. 3-0 it finishes. And we were the better team in that game. We absolutely deserved that result. Huskerich had a really good impact off the bench, which is always great to see. Elsewhere, you can see Marseille did end up winning 1-0. So we are going to finish fourth. If we just look at the rules here, um, and then prize money. Can we look at prize money? Yeah, you can see here. So fourth gets 12 million, third gets 14 million. So we miss out on about 2 million pounds. But to be fair, 12 million is pretty good money. And with that, we should be... Should be guaranteed Champions League football, and indeed we are. So Champions League bound, just about. We were one of the competition surprise packages. I'm okay with that. How much money have we going to have been set? We had about 60 million in the bank. Got 25 million to spend and 800k in wages. That was a, a nice little wage rise, if I might say so myself. Although, given the fact we've got 73 million in the bank... I was hoping they might give me a little bit more money to spend, but you can't always have it your own way, I suppose. Anyway, you can see here various loanies doing okay out on loan, including uh, a son Sal for Augsay, who won 6-1 on the last day of the season, which is huge for them because I think that might have just ensured them not going down. I think if they'd lost that game, actually the way the results went, it didn't matter, but if they had lost that game, there was a chance they would end up in the relegation zone. As things stand, Montpellier and Metz going down on Shea, going to be in the playoffs as well and a top four finish secured which I think is good I was a little bit concerned in the second half of the season that we were going to just fade away from those positions because we did just look a little fatigued by the end of the year although throughout we've been very very competitive and I think just the amount of competitions we've been involved in until the latter stages has meant that this is going to be you know, one of the, the most trialling seasons we were ever really going to have in terms of just sheer quantity of fixtures. And despite a little bit of a wobbly end to things, ultimately, we've got the win on the final day of the season and we have secured top four in some pretty good fashion, if I might add. Anyway, I'm hoping if we hit continue once more, we'll get to the award winners. But if we don't, I'll do the thing where we jump forward and we'll talk all about the plans for next year. Um, but ultimately, um, with Football Manager 2021 on the horizon... I think we've got one or two more seasons left here at the club. So next year, I want, really want to be chasing PSG down. And they are a long, long way away. I want to be hot on their heels if we can be. I think that's that's got to be the aim, right? That has to be the aim. Anyway, looking at the overall best 11, five players added, including Lopez, Kene, Marsden, Marlon Adriano, and Tomov. You can see here now the overall best 11. Big Dub playing centre attack in mid. Of course, he is still at the club. Just kind of holding him hostage. Uh, Blaze and Ari on either wing. Interesting to note that Blaze still holds a spot over Kofi. That might be a little controversial there. Lopez and Kahinde at centre defence in mid. Of course, this season we just finished above Leon on goal difference. Although, actually, no, it would have been goal difference, but they lost on the last day. That does mean that we have outplaced Kahinde's Leon, where he's had a pretty poor season, to be honest. Two goals, two assists, a 7.05. Compared to his Luzanak glory days, he's not very good anymore. But he is still in our Media Dream 11. Anyway, you can see the rest of the team. Of course, Mercier went off to AC Milan last year. He made one appearance for them and was on loan at Alaves. Um, did we loan him to Alaves? I'm now trying to... No, he left two years ago. Wow, that felt. I thought that was last year, but apparently it wasn't. So he sold him for 12.5 million. He's played one game now for Milan and he has just not developed. So I don't know about you, that £12 million that we sold him for seems like a pretty good deal right now. Hugo Robert sadly has retired from football. That makes my heart bleed. I did think about keeping him around, but he actually rejected my offers to extend his contract, which was upsetting. Humer, in goal, of course, was playing for Toulouse this year. Did he make any appearances? He didn't. He's been their backup goalkeeper, their second choice this season. It's a bit sad to see him not playing nearly as much football as you might expect. If we just look at the overall best 11 here, you can see all the numbers... Um, including Kofi, who's now the leading appearance maker with 208 appearances. His average rating just lets him down a little bit. It's all those penalty misses. That's the issue for Kofi. Anyway, if we just have a look at the end of season awards, Antonio Bra, surprise package, maybe getting fans player of the year, but slotted in and played that deep line playmaker role very, very well. 
Um, uh, yeah, I don't feel like we're missing Javi Simmons with Antonio Brat in, to be honest. In fact, if we just look at Simmons, how's he done? Because he was obviously the big sale, really, of the year going to Tottenham. And for them, he's played 14 matches and got a 6.68 rating. Valued at, well, obviously sold for 55 million. If we just compare him with Brack, like, directly, I mean, you can see here, we signed Brack for, what, 1.5 million pounds? Whilst he's not, you know, you know, outmatching Xavi Simmons in every area, considering he got Fans Player of the Year, I consider him a more than adequate replacement. Anyway, you can see here, Sergio Ortiz's goal last episode against Athletic Club, Club Bilbao was considered the goal of the season, which is kind of cool. Felipe Jonathan, by the way, the new captain at left-back, came second in the Fans Player of the Year voting. Nine assists, three goals, really good average ratings for a fullback. Been super impressed by him. He's not a player who I've ever encountered in Football Manager before. But for us, he's obviously been a super great signing. You can see here, Antonio Brach got signing of the year. And Ari has got Young Player of the Year. I don't know how he's managed to get that above Brach, but I'm not going to argue with it. Um, just looking at the 24-year-old, he's had another pretty good year. Of course, there was lots of interest in him last year, but the bids we were getting just weren't in line with what I wanted for him. Um, ultimately this year he's perhaps not put up quite as good a numbers as last year in terms of goals scored and assist but actually his average ratings on the whole have been significantly better albeit in a slightly fewer number of games when you actually consider the lack of games he's probably had a better year this year albeit marginally of course he had a few injuries to contend with looking at the end of season award uh, oh, well not award uh, overview rather you can see here um, kind of the state of things. Of course, we won the Coupe de France and lost in the Europa League semi-final and got top four. That is about as good a season as you could have expected. Decent average attendance is used. 26 different players used. That was the 16th highest in the league. Um, really showing that we have got a lot of strength in depth now, which is cool to see. Anyway, looking ahead to next season, what are the board's expectations? They want us to qualify for the Europa 2 next year, the Europa League the year after that. And uh, this year in the Champions League, they want us to make the group stage. So, of course, we're going to have a gauntlet to run. It's been a little while since I've had to go through the Champions League qualifying rounds. But that is something that we are going to have to do. Um, in terms of just general philosophies, not too much different. They want us to qualify for the Champions League in four years' time. I think, I think we can manage that, everyone. Anyway, end of season team meeting. I'm going to say that we can get champ. I don't want to say I'm going to say Europa League qualification next time. I think if I had said Champions League again, they probably would have criticised me for being over ambitious. So just playing things a little bit safe. Of course, the players now on break on a break. But as I mentioned, um, to start next year, it's going to be Champions League matches, which is kind of exciting to look forward to, I suppose. Anyway, just having a little look at the season as a whole, and I suppose just a, a more personal review. My personal player of the season, who would I give it to? I would probably give it to Felipe Jonathan. I feel like in the past we've had really good deep line playmakers like uh, Bra. I feel like Ari didn't quite play enough games this year, although when he was fit and he did play, he was very, very good. Whereas I think for me, Jonathan was just a surprise package of a signing. I wanted to upgrade the fullbacks, and obviously when you spend £11 million, you want a pretty substantial upgrade. And I thought Jonathan was that for us, and... He's been that and significantly more. He's been absolutely superb this year. The fans have already started to love him. Um, I think you noticed it in a lot of, you know, the live comms this year, really. His job at left back and also, uh, not Galvez, sorry, uh, also Sardella at right back. They had really good standout matches here and there. I mean, Sardella didn't play nearly as many games as Felipe Jonathan because of injuries. But he still managed to get eight assists in 19 games, which is a really, really, you know, decent contribution that shouldn't be kind of underestimated of course on the goal scoring front the great news was we had six players hit double figures which is kind of unheard of obviously Sesco isn't your 50 goal a season striker but with the way in which we're set up we don't really need him to be a 50 goal a season striker that said you know I am looking at the attacking third thinking maybe that's the area to get some upgrades in of course over the last few years we've been in the the habit, I suppose, of selling players on and then spending big money to bring in players. You know, trying to, you know, I guess have a high turnover of players, but ultimately upgrade the team. This summer, we sold £100 million worth of players. And whilst we're not going to receive all of that and be able to spend all of that, there is a little bit of a legacy of that, which enables us to spend £25 million this year. Um, I think if I really wanted to flex in the transfer market, we might need to do a few more sales, similar to the Javi Simmons one last year. Quite who that might involve... To be honest, I don't really know. I feel like I'd have to do it on a case-by-case -case basis. 
Obviously, there was interest in Lopez last year. We had a £54 million pound bid um, towards deadline day in the summer. No one came in in January, but I don't really want to sell Lopez. I think he's just too good at what he offers. I feel like we would struggle to find a player who does what Lopez does for the same price. And that's kind of where the challenges lie. Whilst he didn't get as many goals last year, make no mistake, he, he was one of the kind of um, standout performers across the season as a whole. But no, as I said, I think for me, Felipe Jonathan, probably player of the season and signing of the year. In terms of young player of the year, I think Huskerich had a pretty good season, to be fair. 12 goals, nine of which came in the league in 29 games. A lot of appearances on off the bench as well. Um, of course, joined for 7.5 million and... You know, he perhaps had a better average rating last year, but in terms of as an impact sub this year, I think he offered us something that we kind of lacked last year. Um, Disappointment-wise, I'd probably give it to Gadzic, which might seem really harsh. I mean, we signed him for 1.8 million. Expectations should be low. This guy was the European golden boy in January, though, and he, I think he was living off his time playing in Serbia and how well he'd done last season in Serbia and for their youth team. He joined us and got one goal in 16 appearances, nine of which were starts. This guy was given lots of opportunities to play football. I do think it's a confidence thing. He's still quite a young player. I'm sure he'll crack on. But there's a few question marks over it. Is he good enough to be the second choice striker who we have as kind of a super sub? Which might seem really harsh, but just based off what I've seen this year, I've not been wowed one little bit, which is perhaps just a little bit sad to say anyway if we just look at the overall average ratings of course there's a few players here like uh, Lionel Olivier who only played two games but he played well in his two games so maybe I can't disregard it but elsewhere obviously Ari, Bra, Felipe, Jonathan, Sesco had another great year 19 goals in all competitions 12 in the league slightly slower than last season if I'm being honest you know you could make a an argument that maybe replacing Sesco is the logical move especially if I don't think Gadget is good enough maybe moving Sesco onto the bench and bringing in a new striker is the way of course, Sesco is unhappy with me at the moment. He is not a happy bunny. He's asked to leave the club because I won't give him a wage rise to £60,000 a week. Frankly, I don't think he's worth doubling his wages at this moment. And I don't know, valued at £15 million, If the right offer came in, maybe, just maybe, I would weigh up the possibility of selling Sesco, dare I say. Anyway, just thinking about the team for next year, if we just kind of have a look at the best 11, and I set it up so it is kind of what I envisage the best 11 to be right now. Um, where would I like to strengthen the team? Um, obviously, Bra had a really good year this year, but he has been a little bit on the decline, which I suppose is a bit of a concern, although that is probably because he's just learnt to play the deep line playmaker kind of position naturally. Um, Kenny's had a lot of interest in him. I think if a monster offer came in, I'd probably have to weigh it up, although... I would be kind of against it. I think he had a really good year this year playing as the Segundo Volante. It's actually tricky as to where I would like to strengthen the team. Because I think when we're fit, defensively, we're fine. But obviously, Barry Marsden has had a lot of issues with injuries this year. There were some pretty big teams interested in him in January. And with hindsight, knowing now that he's dislocated his shoulder and now pulled his calf, there is a small part of me thinking, if a £40 million bid came in, I would probably quite seriously consider it for Marsden just because I, I'm not entirely convinced by uh, you know his injury record but also what he offers uh, obviously Marlon Adriano this year has remained fit and if we just compare the two you can see here whilst Marsden is perhaps better technically and as a ball playing player make no mistake from a defensive perspective albeit with a slight lack of perhaps aerial ability Marlon Adriano is the better of the two men although actually when you look at their kind of average ratings they're pretty close Marsden's is probably, I'd, I'd guess, massively bumped up by the nine goals he scored from set pieces, which I suppose in itself can't really be disregarded. But yeah, looking at the team as a whole, I feel like the natural area to look at and go maybe there's an improvement needed is the striking area. Whilst Ari isn't a super exciting kind of standout player, he's putting in the numbers year in and year out, which makes it difficult to justify dropping him. Even players like Harvey Elliott as his backup, I think is a, a pretty, you know, nifty backup to have in the inside forward position. The other thing that we have got to wrestle with is the wages. We still only spend £700,000 a week on wages, which doesn't put us, I don't think, in the bottom half in the league. Uh, in fact, it does. 11th highest spenders of wages. But what I was going to say is the reality is that teams like Lille, Monaco, they're spending close to double what we can on players. And so ultimately there are always going to be slight gaps in the team where I can't afford to pay a player £100,000 a week, despite the fact we are in Champions League football. 
Um, that's something we are going to have to, I think, juggle with a little bit going forward. In terms of youngsters in the first team who might need to be promoted, I think there's a pretty good argument to say that Bauman needs to start playing next year. Um, he was playing for Nancy, who finished, of course, third in the league in the end. He's model citizen personality, 19 years old, 26 games in the league, a 7.36 rating. Part of me is thinking, what an incredible loan move. Keep him there again for another year and see what he can do. But there is another part of me that thinks, probably probably should have him in our own team and see what we can make of him, even if he isn't the best Segundo Volante or deep line playmaker. I don't know. That's a tricky one. I would be very interested to know what you think. Of course, you'll be able to let me know in the stream about Bauman. I think for me, if Nancy are going to be playing in Europe next year for the first time, he's going to get more game time, if anything. So maybe it's just worth loaning him out for another year. Kayate this year was on loan at Norwich. Um, in the Premier League, played 27 games in the Premier League, actually got a 7.04 rating, which is pretty good considering how awful Norwich were in the Premier League. Um, they finished 19th in the end, which is disappointing to say the very least. But actually, Coyate could be the man to come in and maybe play Segundo Volante. If we sold Kenne, maybe Coyate could do a job. I think he could certainly do a job as the backup deep line playmaker as well. Um, I suppose the, the question mark really is over Dirk Proper, who was a bit of a backup player for us this year, but I wasn't particularly impressed by when we gave him opportunities and he didn't feature much. I think it's most likely that Koyate comes into the team to replace him, and as you can see here, he would be a pretty good upgrade in most areas of his game to Proper. Um, so maybe we maybe Proper's the player to move on. Certainly, I think uh, we won't be loaning him out again next year because at 22, realistically, he needs to start making a splash in the first team otherwise... He's probably worth looking to sell on. We spent pretty big min money on him at the time, seven million a couple of years ago. He's had a couple of successful loan spells, and I think with his development and with the direction the team's going in, he's a player worth giving a nod to. Obviously, we've got a few other players kicking around. Kevin Moos, I'm not sure is quite ready for the team, but make no mistake, at 18 years old, he looks pretty blooming good. He returned 18 just yesterday, so he's very, very young still and looks like a tremendous advanced playmaker. Someone who maybe I need to look to get into the first team a little bit more. Of course, Atani was out this year on loan at Toulouse at right back. Has looked pretty good on the whole. I, I can't say he's improved a massive amount because I'm not sure he has. Ultimately, we've got Galvez at right back. We've got Sardella at right back. Um, we are limited on the number of non-EU players we can have. So as good as Atani is, I'm kind of inclined to loan him out again for another year until he's kind of really, really ready just to settle in, take up an international spot and show us what he's all about. Uh, Viani was out on loan this year at Galvez, didn't have the most successful of loan spells, sadly. Only one goal in 24 appearances, albeit half those were on off the bench. The kind of player that... I, I don't. Wanna, I was going to say I need to sell him. Actually, I don't need to sell him at all. He's 19 years old. He's still very, very young. I think we just need to get him a more successful loan next year. But, um, yeah, we, we're stacked. When you look at the team, you've got players like Laurent here, whose name I'm not going to try and say because I will butcher it. Again, a player who probably needs to go out on loan again next year. Got a 7.2 rating in Ligue 2, though. So another successful loan for a long, young Belgian player, which is exciting. Of course, Brahim uh, Abdemesamad played in the first team this year and has looked pretty good at youth level. Uh, I think some people mentioned it before. He's got 50 goals and 17 assists in 36 games at youth level. Maybe I need to start giving him more first team opportunities. The things that scare me really are the fact he's inconsistent and injury prone. I don't know if I can really justify moving on Harvey Elliott to give him kind of the natural second place spot in the team as an inside forward. Maybe he needs to go out on loan, now that I look at it. I think a loan's probably the right move for him at this point. One thing that I think we are certainly experiencing is the fact the players that we do loan out, for the most part, are having pretty successful loans, except the be uh, well, at least the very kind of best of the players. Of course, Mamadou Diamande, we signed from Bastia this year. Um, good little signing, brought him in for absolutely nothing, if you were wondering about his overall development. He is developing quite nicely. He is 15 years old. Um, so he couldn't feature at all last year, but defensively, superb. Mentally, very good barring his aggression. Just a super, super mean kind of ball-winning midfielder. And at 15 years old, capped for the Ivory Coast under-20s. Pretty exciting time in terms of youngsters. Of course, Tangai, I need to look to get into the team. I know there was a comment uh, a couple of episodes ago asking about how he compares against James Connolly. I don't think he's quite in the same kind of level as James Connolly, although, of course, he is four years younger um, so maybe that changes the complexion of things slightly. 
But the thing with Tangai is he's good. He's just not great yet. I need I need him to develop more. I don't want to thrust him into the first team too young because I could probably throw him into the first team. But if he started to play badly, it would really negatively impact his development. Poor form can knock your impact at your performance. It can affect, affect morale, which affects training. And so in turn, there is a risk that when you throw in a young player who's just too young, they will just sink to the bottom. You know, they, they, they go into a kind of a downward spiral and it can actually really negatively affect their development. So it's something we've certainly got to be mindful of. But the big kind of long and short of things is we've got no shortage of youngsters. There's a few who have been out on loan and been very successful in terms of players who I think might come back next year. Brois is another option that we could maybe bring back. He's been on loan at Angers, although not had the best ratings. Maybe he could be a pretty good squad player this year. Or this coming year, rather. Um, but I don't know. There, there's certainly decisions that have got to be made. And there, there's some very, very good players, as you can kind of tell by the number of two and a half star players. But it's about isolating the ones who are going to make that next step up. Because some of these players, I don't think will make the next step up. Players like Colin Cassidy, I've got you know a few question marks over. He's actually a player we signed on a free earlier on this year. I don't think I covered it because we signed him outside of a transfer window, bizarrely. But he's the example of a player who I was quite excited about signing on a free. But actually, once he got here, once I saw him, I just I don't think he's going to make the next step up, unfortunately, for the Northern Irish international. Either way, though, what a great season. What a great season. The squad is very, very big. I think there could be a bit of wheeling and dealing going on. It'll be fun to have your company tomorrow for that. And, uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and this season. As I mentioned kind of earlier... Um, the reality is the FM21 is pr it's about a month away. Um, I would like to give myself maybe a week's rest period, a week before Football Manager 21 really kicks off and goes into full swing, just where I'm not doing any Let's Plays and stuff. I can work on some kind of hype FM21 content, top five countdowns, that kind of stuff. With that in mind, we might only have one or two seasons left here at Luzernak, which I know is kind of super sad to say, but... Um, I've really enjoyed my time here so far and the fact we've managed to get to the Champions League in the seasons we have is really really impressive I mean eight seasons to go from where we are to where we are kind of where we were to where we are now is no mean feat this was always going to be a race against time I feel like we've kind of won the race at this point now it's about enjoying this moment now that we're at the dizzying heights I always knew that to dethrone PSG was going to be a very very difficult task the more I look at it, the more impossible it fears, feels, but we're going to give it our best shot going into next season. And, uh, well, hopefully, you're going to be along for the ride. Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up everything from me today. Thank you so much for watching today's Luzernak video. I'll see you guys tomorrow on Twitch. And otherwise, we'll be starting season number nine coming on Monday. Anyway, that's all from me. It is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.